I think we're all heavily indebted to the brilliant writing of Bishop Wright, especially the historical aspect of his investigations where he sees that Jesus is a messianic figure to the core. However, his idea that Jesus' plan to have Yahweh return and all of the Old Testament prophecies fulfilled fails because it doesn't stretch forward to the second coming, the parousia. Yes, Jesus is enacting what Israel should have done, but to have the climax somehow in 70 AD is very cynical because rather than Israel being restored to pristine conditions, Israel was destroyed in 70 AD. That is not the end of the story. So I think that uh, Bishop Wright's narrative is untrue to that extent. It's very good as far as it goes, but it simply leaves out the end of the story. We're not being told about the lion lying down with the lamb. We're not being taught uh, by that narrative when the nations are beating their swords into plowshares. This is a major, massive part of the vision of the prophets, and we aren't there yet. So I propose this then as a, a statement about true and false narratives, to use the current word that's being bandied about a great deal in politics, Fal false and true narratives. God, I suggest, has a kingdom of God or restoration movement. Bishop Wright says the same thing. God has a kingdom of God or restoration movement underway as his project for man, God's plan for man. Easy to remember it that way. This is God's response to the failure and disobedience of the first Adam. It's perfectly plain. God's response in Jesus to the failure of Adam. This gospel or good news of the kingdom is God's project, also God's logos, and it's an invitation to all who choose to participate. That against Calvin. Uh, there's a choice being made by all of us as to whether we accept this kingdom restoration program or not. Now the narrative goes like this, I suggest. Each participant must embrace the challenge by first believing in the project. That's Jesus' famous statement. Unless you repent and believe the kingdom of God gospel as a child, you won't enter it. The kingdom of God project has to be embraced and believed. That's Abraham believed God and was counted as making him right. You must believe in the kingdom of God project like a child or you won't be part of it. Then he must be forgiven for his past, of course, in the atoning substitutionary death of Jesus. He must then embark on the journey that ends in immortalization and co-rulership of the new world order, which will be the world inaugurated at the last trumpet to be blown, as in Revelation 11, 15 to 18, which hasn't happened, the great resurrection trumpet. This is the future return or parousia of the Messiah to the earth. And that part of the story I don't find with any clarity in Bishop Wright's writings. For the narrative to be true, the characters in the narrative must be identified correctly. The man Messiah Jesus is the pioneer participant in the Kingdom Project. He's also the announcer of the project, the evangelist. He's the Gospel preacher, Hebrews 2.3. He died, of course, to forgive all who believe on his terms. The God who plans and directs the entire project is the God of Israel and of Abraham. Galatians 3.8 says the gospel was preached to Abraham. Also the God of Isaac and Jacob and the God of Jesus, the one God directing the whole plan. Candidates to participate in the kingdom project are men and women of all nations, not just Jews. Now false narratives are those which do not match the only true narrative, the biblical one. False narratives, inadequate narratives, fail because they miss the biblical climax by diverting the narrative, taking a wrong turn by offering the participants a false hope of disembodied existence in so-called heaven at death. That's just not where the biblical narrative goes. It doesn't end there. And as for AD 70, that's a complete non-climax. Far from being the vision of the prophets, it's the very opposite. It's the destruction of Israel and the Messiah's land. So this false narrative which takes you to heaven or hell when you die destroys the actual objective of the Kingdom Project which is to govern and administer the world with the Messiah Jesus. That's to say, his associates, his Christian believers, are those who are going to govern and administer the world with the Messiah. 
Messiah Jesus when he comes back, Jesus and his associate administrators will be empowered and authorized to subdue the world, that is, the Messiah's enemies, led by a final Antichrist. The book of Revelation is a concentrated account of that future encounter of Messiah with hostile resistant man. This is the climax of the whole kingdom movement, the object and conclusion of the true narrative and project. Psalm 2, in 12 short verses, reveals in advance the end point of the kingdom project. The hostile world is there bidden to submit to the Messiah, whom God will have then placed at his second coming, at the second coming of Jesus, that is. God will have then placed, at the second coming of Jesus, on Mount Zion. God puts his Messiah on Mount Zion. And the nations are warned not to resist him, lest they be destroyed by the overwhelming authority of God's agent, the Messiah Jesus. Appropriately then, in Psalm 2 verse 9, I quote, the Messiah will break them with a rod of iron and shatter them like earthenware. And this verse, would you believe it, is recalled three times by Jesus in the book of Revelation, 2, 26 and 27, chapter 12, verse 5, and chapter 19, verse 15. These passages in Revelation and Psalm 2, verse 9, declare the goal and reward of the kingdom project. So then the appropriately biblical narrative goes like this in view of the kingdom project that the God of Israel has underway. Psalm 2 verse 9, the Messiah will break his enemies with a rod of iron and shatter them like earthenware. This text is recalled three times by Jesus in the book of Revelation and he offers that same prospect to the saints, the church in 2, 26 and 27, chapter 12 verse 5 and 19 verse 15. These passages declare the goal and reward of the kingdom project. They remind the reader of the need for human subjection to the great kingdom project of the one God of Israel. They also describe the authority which will be conferred on Jesus and the saints, recalling Daniel 7, verses 14, 18, 22 and 27, which is really the heart of the whole kingdom project. Daniel chapter 7, verses 14, 18, 22, 27. 27th verse there, speaking of a time when the saints are going to be obeyed by the whole of the world under Jesus' authority. And Daniel 2, 44 and 45, the kingdom or world empire which is going to replace all its rivals. That's the real climax. I don't see that clearly laid out in Bishop Wright's scheme. The devil, of course, will then be bound. That is massive. The devil who is now currently deceiving the entire world, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one, He's going to be bound and his effects then reduced to nothing. That is the climax of the Christian project. Until the devil is bound, we haven't achieved the end that we need. The biblical true narrative is falsified when it's never allowed its climax. The project is falsified when it's reduced, shrunk, to a dying and rising Messiah project, which allows for no denouement, unraveling of the grand project which is the subject I'll go back to that paragraph, sorry. The biblically true narrative is falsified when it never is allowed its climax. The proper climax of the project is falsified when it's reduced or shrunk to a quote dying and rising Messiah project, which allows for no denouement of the grand project, which is the subjection of rebellious man the whole of mankind, and governments to the risen and exalted and returning Messiah and his saints. Thus, finally, Psalm 2 finds its fulfillment as the vision of the returning Messiah who takes control of chaotic human societies and turns them at the future seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, 15 to 18, turns them into the kingdom of God, which begins officially worldwide and formally only at the seventh trumpet. This is the end game of the entire kingdom project. This is the gospel of the kingdom, as announced by Jesus in Hebrews 2.3. We find that fact stated nicely, Hebrews 2.3, and by all the New Testament Christians. Briefly then, any attempt to describe the biblical narrative without its climax at the future return of Jesus and the resurrection of all the saints, 1 Corinthians 15.23, is a failed and inadequate narrative 
not fully true to the Bible. 